Today, I am not going to drive a car. There is no one sat next to me. I'm literally out in the wild with a self-driving autonomous vehicle. Australia and New Zealand is the first right-hand drive market in the world that is receiving it. This is a Tesla Model 3, and this car is packed full of what Tesla calls its full self-driving, in brackets, supervised technology. <laughs> it's not just arriving, it has chosen a parking space. Should I be worried? Whoa, whoa! Um, it has suddenly, I'm gonna have to override. Fast. It's really very simple and probably the best way of thinking about FSD, full self-driving, is it's like an extension uh, of navigation rolling in um, autonomous or semi-autonomous adaptive cruise control and adding a few features. Because basically all you do is pick somewhere you want to go in the navigation, take your foot off the brake, press and hold FSD, and... <laughs> Away we go. It really is that simple. There's a traffic cone there. There's a traffic cone there. It obviously cannot be told that it's there any other way other than its sensors outside and off we go. Oh, it's so weird. So you find me in the confines of a very safe and secure specific purpose-built driver training center. It's a private road, it's closed, it's secure, it's a very easy environment to control for a self-driving vehicle like this. But here's the twist in this story. I'm not staying within the confines of this very safe and easy to control driver education pieces. center. Turn left onto Mount Cotton road. As my good friend navigation there is saying, we are heading out into the the badlands of a public road. And you'll notice there is no one sat next to me. There's no one waiting for me at the end of the road. I'm actually giving it my own navigation instructions. I'm literally out in the wild with a self-driving autonomous vehicle. And I cannot wait to see what it does. It is detected that that car has moved away. This is incre This is actually genuinely quite nerve wracking because there's vehicles coming in both directions. It can see them, as you can see from its display here, and I'm hoping it's not gonna move until it's completely clear and safe to do so. Be interesting to see how patient this vehicle is. Right, I can feel it's released the brakes. There is a car coming, but that was completely safe. Wow, well, here we go. This is it. We are out on the road in a full self-driving supervised Tesla Model 3. And for the first part of the day, the Tesla perfectly negotiated a wide variety of challenges that you're likely to encounter on any average drive on any particular day. This shouldn't be a challenge for the Tesla. This is the freeway. This is what autonomous cars or self-driving vehicles have the least stress dealing with because it's easily the most predictable environment that a car can be in. The vehicles all traveling in the same direction. They're all generally going the same speed. Uh, the roads are very clearly defined, whether it be by lane markings or the barriers either side. So there's less for the car to have to process in terms of information, and therefore, there's less for it to get flummoxed and confused by. And so far, that is exactly what it's doing. It's dealing with the situation really, really well. It's actually bizarre how human it feels. That might sound like a strange thing to say, but I assumed it would have be full of glitches and strange things that make it feel like a computer is steering the car, but it's. It's like it's been trained by a human, and I suppose to an extent that's what has happened. It does a lot of the things that I would absolutely do at the wheel myself. Now that may not be advisable all the time, but all I'm saying is it has a very human feel to it. It doesn't feel too automated. Oh look, there's another autonomous Tesla going in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's saying keep left, and it hasn't yet. So it'll be interesting to see <laughs> right on cue. I promise I didn't plan that, or maybe it's listening to me. I like the way the navigation is still running 
like it's giving me instructions. I'm not doing anything. You're basically giving yourself instructions. You're talking to yourself. Destination is on the right. As she said, we have arrived. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's not just arriving. It has chosen a parking space and is parking up for me. That is just showing off, Tesla. The point there is it didn't know. It didn't know there was going to be other vehicles parked here. It didn't know this was going to be a, a free space. It just worked it out when it got here. That is very cool. It's not perfect um, by any means, but that's exactly why it's in brackets supervised. I still have to be sitting here as a driver paying full attention. But you know what is absolutely staggering is the number of times I didn't have to intervene. It pretty much handled the whole thing. Um, I didn't touch the steering wheel once on that whole last leg of the trip. And only once during the entire test did I actually have to intervene and override the accelerator because it was airing on the side of caution and going slowly. I'm frankly quite blown away. With my trust building in the self-driving Tesla, I had time to consider a couple of the more contentious issues surrounding all autonomous vehicles, not just this one. Tesla's being very coy on details. In fact, they made a point in the press conference and the presentation today of saying there will be no Q&A. We don't want any questions at all. Just get in the car and experience it. Um, perhaps that's just because they want to maximise the time we are in the car and enjoying the system, or perhaps the skeptic in me thinks there's some difficult questions to answer that they're not quite ready to yet and one of those of course would be where's the legislation at the moment it's technically illegal to drive an autonomous car on Australian roads but Tesla is keen to make a point that this is not an autonomous car it is uh, full self-driving assisted. It's level two. However, it's a bit of a grey area and the definition of level three offered by the Society of Automotive Engineers states that the technology can drive the vehicle under limited conditions and will not operate unless all the required conditions are met. And when the car requests, the driver must take over. Examples, it says, include a traffic jam chauffeur. Now, that description sounds a lot like FSDS, but if that was true, then Tesla's tech would be considered autonomous and therefore illegal. Who's responsible for if something goes wrong? Now, I would say it's probably me still, because technically it's not an autonomous vehicle. I have to be here. But if I'm sat here and the car is, as you can see, driving entirely by itself, and something goes wrong, well, surely it was its fault. I wasn't really doing anything. Or maybe it's the fact that I wasn't doing anything that makes me responsible. You see the conundrum we have? Either way, the afternoon brought a few surprises and perhaps a sign that my concerns were not all completely unwarranted and oh, that the Tesla FSD system is not infallible. Um, for all its information and all its cameras and data that it uses to, to drive safely, it can't spot little things like potholes. And a couple of times I would have, oh, there's one right there. A couple of times I would have seen that coming and avoided it, uh, especially with a vehicle with low profile tires and expensive alloy wheels. But it can't see that. So that's probably the only sort of niggly detail, I would say, that stopping this car from being perfect. But perfect, it was not. It's got a nice balance of politeness and aggression. Oh, but for some reason we're just slowing down here. I don't know why. Um, it has suddenly, I'm going to have to override. I don't know what it did then. It just pulled to the left and yeah, that was concerning. Okay. So I've had to take over driving there. It thinks it's a 30 kilometer an hour limit and it had just stopped driving at the speed limit, which is a freeway. And I have no idea why it pulled over to the left. There was a truck behind me. And as you probably heard, the truck beat me, as, as I would, as a, as a human driver. If someone isn't speeding up to freeway speeds, that could potentially cause a hazard. That's a pretty good example that there are still some bugs in the system to sort out. It's good at dealing with the everyday, but every now and then, something will confuse it and all it seems capable of doing in those situations is slowing down to walking pace and pulling over to the left which is you'd have to argue the, the safest thing you can do under the circumstances but that doesn't completely avoid making a hazard of yourself pedestrians cars hazards as long as it 
And here we go, look, back to 60 again. Why? There's nothing to say we need to be doing 60, so I'm going to have to override. We are not there yet, Tesla. Whoa, whoa! It just went the wrong side of a traffic island. Okay, so it ain't perfect. Now, whether you think this technology is deeply flawed and has a long way to go, because frankly, I think that's probably true, or whether you're one of the early adopters, which Tesla typically attracts, and you're all for this kind of technology, and you'd love to have an autonomous or self-driving car, it proves a massive step forward in self-driving driver assistance systems. Uh, and that no one is taking their foot off the gas when it comes to autonomous cars, self-driving technology. But the one thing I can take away from this is that I have never been on a car launch media event that involves being in a car by myself and I've not actually done any driving. And that in itself makes this whole event very special and I think I'll always look back on this as a significant milestone in cars in Australia and the world. That's cool. Oh god, it did get very close to that car there for a second.